If you've been to the primate house at the St. Louis Zoo recently, you may have wondered, where are all the animals? Thanks to a brand new exhibit, the happy answer is outside. You know what, after a long winter when you're inside all the time, what it feels like to get outside with that sun and fresh air. Well, these animals are no different. They get psychological and physical health benefits from that. So everything started with the desire to get the animals outside and then it grew into this amazing exhibit. Primate Canopy Trails opened in the summer of 2021 and as a result of five years of collaborative expertise and insight between designers, architects, animal keepers, and horticulture and maintenance staff. In order to pull off getting these animals outdoor in a 35,000 square foot area, we needed to take down an old building and then the zoo train has several tunnels. One runs right underneath this exhibit. So we went through and renovated that tunnel and got it in tip top condition before we started building on top of it. It's based on two concepts. One concept is what's called a rotational exhibit. It's a lot like an animal would use a home range in the wild. They don't use the whole thing every day. They go to different parts on different days for different reasons, and that's what they do here. Eight very unique types of spaces designed to be vertical, designed to interact with living trees so the animals can do the same. And the second core foundation are tunnels. That's how animals get from place to place. But the tunnels aren't just a roadway, they're a destination. So we found our younger animals use them as trampolines and to explore, to visit their neighbors, to see what guests are doing. But before guests were allowed into the exhibit, the primates were given a whole month to get used to their new area. For some of these animals, they had never been outside before. The key to all of our acclimation was we let the animals set the pace. So we never tried to force animals out. We never put their food at the other end, so they had to go there to get their dinner or their breakfast that day. We just opened up the doors, we let them have the spaces, and then we let their behavior guide us with what came next. Our spider monkeys are a great example. The first day, you could see them sitting in the primate house, in the doorway, looking outside. By the next day, they were sitting just outside that door in the beginning of the tunnel, and then the next day, they started going further and further. So they took their time, and now they probably are using their habitat 360 degrees. It was very, very clear that they were excited, they were having fun, they were enjoying it, and exploring more and more day by day. But if we had tried to force them out, their first experience might have been negative or scary or fearful. Although they still have the option of being inside, many primates are reveling in the great outdoors and all of the new sights, sounds, and smells that come with it. The trees, the wind, the highway. One of our habitats directly looks out over the lion enclosure. So we've got lions who can see monkeys and lemurs and lemurs and monkeys who can see lions. You know, if you think of something like Polar Bear Point, is amazing. We have one polar bear, so it, it, it gives that animal wonderful welfare. I have 14 species and over 40 animals that are all getting their lives improved because of primate canopy trails. Now they're able to have a large, very enriching exhibit in life and really the ability to interact with our, our guests, which is very important as well. And although guests could always smell the animals in the primate house, now they have the opportunity to hear them. The black and white rough lemurs, um, they are the loudest animal we have in our building. You can hear them literally across the entire zoo. That's something that our guests hadn't really heard in the past. All the senses that the animals are getting, our guests are getting from our small primates for the first time also. So how did all of these new stimuli affect the primates' behavior towards visitors? They're doing the same types of things they did indoors. We have some animals that were people watchers, and they do the same thing here. The animals who kind of ignored it and went on their day do the same thing here. I was surprised because they always had that glass front. They just seem to do their thing, which is great. It's exactly what we'd hoped for. The new exhibit not only provides mental enrichment for the animals, but it also gives them the space needed to tap into their physical potential. You know, just because a colobus monkey in the wild might have been documented jumping 30 feet, an animal who's never jumped more than 10 feet at a time is not going to have the uh, athletic ability or the confidence. And that's what they're getting a chance to practice right now. But then we also thought about our human primates, our guests, and being able to get them up off the ground, just like a monkey. We wanted to do it in a way that impacted the soil and the tree roots as little as possible. So when you look at that walkway, what you're seeing is essentially a roller coaster structure. And the whole purpose is to have the fewest points where 
the structure goes down into the ground and affects the tree roots. All of the steel structure have these graceful curves and organic shapes, and those are to represent trees themselves, and they provide more ways for the animals to move around the exhibit. The St. Louis Zoo is home to several endangered and critically endangered species of primate and uses the new exhibit to show visitors how habitat loss contributes to their dwindling numbers. The big message of primate canopy trails is that all primates, including humans, need healthy forests. And a healthy forest is one that's continuous, not fragmented into little sections. And this climbing structure actually gives that message in an experiential way for kids and others. Let's go through the tunnel. You're gonna be walking up, a, climbing up a pathway or going through a tunnel and there's a sign that says go. We created a bridge over a waterway so you can now get to your family. Then you try another path and there's a dead end and there's a sign that says, oh, sorry, logging road. You have to find another way to get your food. So it really shows out some of the challenges wild primates are dealing with. So whether it's getting a monkey's point of view in the climbing structure or hearing the raucous call of the black and white roughed lemur, the hope is that visitors will understand that with a little thoughtfulness, ingenuity, and effort, human development doesn't have to come at the expense of irreplaceable wildlife. We're really wanting them to appreciate the animals, but we also want to get that point across. Development is inevitable, but there are ways to knit together those wild places through human spaces so that the animals can, can live in harmony with humans. For Living St. Louis, I'm Kara Vanninger.